Okay, people, I'm in my Airstream and I wanted to show you the internal wiring that I did for the solar panels. It's raining outside, so uh, this is a good time to do interior uh, view, and then I'll uh, go out tomorrow and show you the topside view. Um, and part of the reason I, I wired it the way I wired it is so that I could do the interior wiring on rainy days while I waited for a sunny day to uh, do the exterior stuff, which took quite some time. and. Um, I, I was glad to not be racing daylight when I did it. Okay, so let me turn this camera around and I will show you what I got here. Um, I am uh, in a 2016 International Signature 25 FB Twin, if that helps. Um, and uh, by the way, also thanks to everybody who's posted information. It's been hugely helpful, so I hope I'm returning the favor. Okay, here we go. In the twin model here, you have twin beds on either side and then this nightstand in the middle um, and the bathroom is on the right hand side and I really did not want to drill holes into my roof so what I did is I removed the corner panel in the bathroom here and I ran my solar wires up and I have two studs so my wires go through the um, black sewer vent pipe and up out through the roof and that works beautifully uh, and then I just have these two studs here so the wires I was feeding through the roof were actually very short and manageable. It made it easy to snake um, and it'll make it easy to detach if I have to um, remove those wires or reroute them or um, if they degrade over time or something like that. So um, those two studs inside make it easy to completely detach and, and redo those wires up top. And I just run the wires down, the zip tied to the wall, uh, and through the hole there. I've seen other people wrote, write them, uh, wrap them actually, actually behind the toilet, but um, that requires coming out into the main bathroom space and I thought that that would get dirty. So the exchange here was that they come out and are exposed over here. Now uh, I'm gonna look for a little bit of conduit or something to put over that or maybe I'll put a wooden piece, but um, I think that is a very small price to pay in a spot that no one ever sees. It's totally out of view uh, for a very simple wire routing. So you can see this spot in the grand view of the trailer. Right? It's way down in this corner here. No one's going to see that when they're walking around the trailer. So these wires come through here and then they route right along behind the hot water heater and then right alongside the hot water heater and then they go under this metal panel, which is right inside the front storage door. You can see them coming out here. And then they go into this configuration. Now, I am no professional wirer. I've tried to make everything safe and um, as much to code as I possibly can. But, um, you know, this is very solidly screwed together, if not as pretty as I would ideally like it. So things go to that Blue Sea Systems cutoff switch it kills off both the red and black wires, and then they route to the um, to the uh, solar charge controller right there, the um, the blue power charge controller that you can see. And then the hot has a 30 amp fuse in it before it goes to the battery bus bars. So um, so this is the main business end of the pan of the system, and it's right inside this door. So from the outside, even though you can't see it you can reach in and grab that control, okay? What is uh, maybe less obvious is I've also put the battery monitor right here, right? So you can actually see that battery monitor through the door of the trailer when you open it. So if you open the storage door, you can see the battery monitor and then you can just reach in with your hand blind and grab that switch and it, it's very easy reach and easy to grab. And there's a light there and you can stick your head in if you need to as well. So, so those wires go right through that hole right there. And um, this battery monitor is mounted in the back of this underbed storage cabinet, right? And the wire goes through there and through there and through a hole right there into the wiring closet. And I'll show you that next. Now this wiring closet just has a little cover on it. You pull it off and the first thing you'll notice if you do an install is it's a mess down there. And uh, if anything, it looks a little neater now than when I started. The inverter is up on the wall here. The plugs for the inverter go, this red wire goes straight to the battery. The black wire goes to the bus and this 
telephone cable right there goes to the remote switch in the kitchen, okay? At the other end of the inverter, and you can see it with that, there's a little bit of a uh, label right at the tip of my finger down there. And that la label tells you about a button that's on the front of the inverter. You can maybe just barely see the button peeking out there. And that enables or disables remote operation. So if you don't have this telephone wire, right, uh, your remote won't work, but also that button has to be in the right configuration. In terms of what I learned about this wiring configuration, the thing under the inverter is a giant fuse, 150 amp fuse for the inverter itself. So the wire coming out of one side of it, <laughs> it's a mess in here. Uh, the wire coming out of one side of it goes to the inverter. The wire coming out of the other side of it goes straight to the battery. So that is that uh, is a, a big fuse between the inverter and the battery, okay? This dealio right here, this gangly weird thing, is the solenoid, which is the electric um, use versus store switch. And it cuts off power to all the systems except for the brakes, the propane detector, and the subwoofer, oddly, um, uh, when the uh, use store switch is in store mode. So um, that's a little weird thing. You can see there's a fuse on the right and a fuse on the left there. There's one, there's one. And those are little five amp fuses that are a good thing to check if nothing else is working, okay? To the left of that is this black box that I did not open, but it is the distribution panel for all of the 12 volt functions uh, related to lights, blinkers, um, uh, marker lights, brakes, etc. So. All of these colored wires that match the colors that come out of your trailer jack or go into this box. And for that reason, I didn't have to open it, okay? Down here is the negative bus bar. All the black wires and negative things lead to here. And then one of the a wire goes off of there and leads to ground directly. Over here is the positive bus bar. Each of those are fused. Um, I don't actually know how it works. Um, and I intend to ask. But if you have things on the copper side of the bar, it does one thing. And if you have things on the black side of the bar, it does another. And um, right now, my solar hookup is right there on the copper side of the bar. But uh, that may be wrong, and I may need to move it, okay? The main battery input is all the way to the left here, and the, the output after that, the solenoid switch, is the second one here, okay? So that's what's going on there. Okay, I did have to install a shunt and I did it in a way that was like cheap and easy and maybe a little messy, but you can see it, it's tucked up under here, uh, just on the wall. It's securely mounted, um, but and sort of out of the way, easy for me to add and remove things since it's right inside the door here. Um, but I know that um, wiring purists would not like the look of this uh, situation when they first opened it from the factory. <laughs> And um, I, I haven't really done much to improve it by putting this thing in here. The shunt, the, the wire on the left there goes to the battery. The three wires on the right, one goes to the bus, one goes to the solar, and one goes to the inverter. Um, and between those three things, everything uh, runs through this shunt and is measured. Uh, the little black and red wire with the little pins sticking into the little computery thing there are the um, temperature sensor on the battery. And the gray telephone wire right here that ducks through this hole is the battery uh, charge, um, the battery... Um, it's that thing. Okay? Okay, so that's what my uh, compartment looks like. It ain't pretty, but it is at least as good as it was when I found it. Uh, one thing to note is when I open it up, these red and black caps on the inverter had fallen off and the connections between that to that inverter were really shockingly close to the skin of the trailer. So I actually added a couple wooden shims to the top of the inverter. Again, not pretty, but I did that to, to pull that away from the skin a little bit because it was a little shocking how... Well, to pardon the pun, a little shocking how close that was to the skin, and I worried about having hot skin, like both in an electrical sense and a human biological sense. 
Okay? So there you go.